I welcome you all for the series of uh, lecture on uh, metrology. So now we will start the lecture series on uh, module 10 in which we will be discussing about uh, the comparators. Topics covered in this uh, module are uh, introduction to comparators, the various uh, features of uh, comparators and how the comparators are classified various uh, types of comparators uh, will be discussed as also advanced uh, comparators uh, will be discussed. Now we will start uh, the first lecture in this uh, module number 10. Topics covered in this uh, first lecture are introduction to comparators and uh, the various uh, basic features of uh, the comparators and uh, how they are classified we will learn about the classification of uh, comparators and also the uses of uh, comparators. Let us start the introduction to comparators. Now, these uh, comparators indicate uh, the differences in size between the standard and the workpiece being measured. There is an integral display unit with uh, sufficient uh, magnification. That means it does not indicate or it does not measure the actual dimension of the workpiece, but it indicates how much it differs in size from the basic uh, desired dimension. However, the comparators can be used for direct measurement within uh, uh, its uh, range of uh, operation. For example, if the range of the dial indicator is uh, 0 to 10 millimeter, Within this range, the comparator can be used for direct measurement of the workpiece. Now, this uh, picture shows uh, the basic system of uh, uh, the, uh, me mechanical uh, indicator. So, we have a stage wherein uh, the uh, standard and uh, the workpieces uh, can be placed, and there is an arrangement, there is a, a column to which uh, the Comparator can be mounted and uh, the differences, the, initially we have to place the standard on the table and uh, we should uh, set the reading of the comparator to zero and then we have to remove the standard and we have to place the, unknown, the workpiece of unknown size between the table and uh, the spindle and uh, the uh, dial indicator or the mechanical comparator shows uh, the reading uh, which will be difference from the uh, basic uh, size. These comparators are uh, the instruments calibrated by means of uh, end standards for example uh, slip gauges to quantify unknown uh, dimensions. The purpose of a comparator is to detect and display the small differences between the unknown dimensions and the standard. The difference in uh, dimensions is uh, detected as displacement of the sensing uh, probe, for example, the contact probe in the dial indicator, the movement of the contact probe in the dial indicator and uh, the difference in dimension is also detected by comparison of shadow with uh, a chart gauge which uh, we will be discussing after some time. The important and essential function of the instrument is to magnify the small input displacement so that it is displayed on an analog or digital uh, scale. Comparators are used in uh, mass production to inspect the components to very close tolerances with uh, high degree of precision and uh, speed. Quickly, we can uh, inspect uh, the work pieces and we can segregate uh, as uh, acceptable work pieces and not acceptable uh, work pieces. Use of uh, line standards such as uh, vernier caliper and micrometers 
require uh, considerable skill in the use of these instruments whereas use of comparator is relatively easy and uh, quick. Multiple dimensions can be checked in a very short uh, time using comparators. Let us study the basic uh, features of uh, comparators. It, any comparator consists of a sensing device which faithfully senses the input signal and there is a magnifying system to amplify the signal, input signal to suitable level. For this magnification, uh, uh, different uh, methods are used like mechanical methods, optical method, pneumatic method, hydraulic method or electronic method of magnification. And any comparator will uh, essentially consists of a display system, commonly a scale and a pointer is used. Now what are the desirable features of comparators? Now the scale of uh, the comparator uh, should be linear within uh, its uh, operating range. Uh, there should be wide range of uh, uh, wide range for uh, comparison so that uh, it can be used for uh, uh, within a wide range of application. There should not be any backlash and friction between the moving parts should be very very less and inertia of uh, uh, the parts, various parts should be less. It should be very precise and uh, it should contain, it should have good uh, measurement uh, accuracy and the indicator should be very much uh, clear so that we can easily take the reading. The indicator can be analog type as shown uh, here. So I can uh, see the uh, analog indicator. Uh, so the starts from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, in the Counterclockwise in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the contact uh, probe, and we have the pointer. And you can see uh, the markings on the scale are very much uh, clear so that we can easily read. And uh, this uh, shows uh, a digital uh, indicator so that we can easily take the reading. As also, we can transfer the data via uh, some communication uh, systems to the computer system. Now uh, the other uh, desirable uh, features are uh, it should be easy to operate it, it should not require much uh, skill uh, of operation and uh, no zero error, uh, the, there should not be any pointer uh, oscillations. oscillations, it should uh, move smoothly over its uh, range and the system should be robust in uh, design so that it withstands the reasonable uh, uh, ill usage and uh, the measuring uh, pressure should be very low and it should be uniform throughout the uh, operation and there should be inbuilt uh, compensation for uh, temperature uh, effects. So you can uh, see here a uh, a system which has a, a comparator system with uh, the base and uh, there is a column you can see the threaded uh, column so that this measuring head can be moved up and down uh, this height between the table and the probe can be adjusted depending upon the workpiece uh, size and also these uh, tables are replaceable depending upon the application we can uh, change uh, the tables and uh, this is the sensing uh, probe and uh, the output this is an, ex this is an example for uh, electronic uh, comparator an LVDT the, when we place the workpiece uh, between uh, the table and the probe the probe will move and uh, the signal is uh, sent to the indicator and the pointer will move on the uh, scale a rotary scale, we can uh, select uh, the desired uh, range and uh, sensitivity of uh, operation. Now how these uh, 
comparators are classified depending upon their design. They are classified as mechanical comparators, electrical and electronic comparators, pneumatic uh, comparators, optical comparators which use a optical system, fluid displacement comparators, multi-check comparators uh, in which multiple dimensions can be checked at a time and then automatic uh, gauging uh, machines. Now let us start uh, the discussion on uh, mechanical uh, comparators. Now let us study the uh, different uh, displacement amplification systems. What are the different types of uh, amplification systems used in the mechanical comparators and what are the various types of mechanical uh, comparators. Uh, different types are uh, available like uh, dial indicator, uh, read type mechanical indicator, sigma comparator, Johansson microcator and internal group comparators. Now, the displacement amplification systems used in the mechanical comparators are uh, illustrated here. Uh, different amplification systems are used in the mechanical comparators like rack and pinion and gear trying. You can see this is uh, the uh, spindle contact uh, spindle which uh, contacts the workpiece. So, when the workpiece is uh, placed between the table and uh, the spindle, the spindle will move in. So, spindle is uh, uh, connected to the rack and rack. Uh, we have the rack on this uh, rack cut on the spindle, and we have a pinion here. When the spindle moves, that is rack moves, pinion will uh, rotate. So this uh, rotation of the pinion is amplified using uh, uh, the gear uh, trying. Finally, the motion is uh, transmitted to the pointer and pointer will uh, move on uh, a rotary scale and then we can take the reading. Now uh, this is a very simple uh, gear trying with uh, 10 is to 1. Uh, ratio and uh, we have another uh, simple uh, gear train with uh, a rack you can see the rack uh, which contains the contact uh, probe so when the rack uh, moves up and down this gear train will rotate and we get uh, uh, an amplification of 10 is to 1 uh, ratio and then we have a compound gear train with uh, rack so this is uh, the rack and then we have a compound uh, gear train which will give us uh, 100 is to 1 uh, magnification ratio and then we have length of indicator indicator hand f so this is the length of uh, indicator as the length of indicator increases and there also we get uh, some amplification Now another amplification mechanism used is the lever uh, mechanism. So this is a simple uh, lever with uh, 10 is to 1 uh, ratio. You can see here this is the contact uh, point and this is the pivot. The distance between the contact point and pivot is 1 uh, millimeter here, 1 unit. And distance between pi pivot and uh, the in tip of uh, pointer is uh, 10 so that the signal, displacement signal is amplified by 10 uh, times. Now this uh, shows uh, a compound uh, lever wherein we get an amplification of 256 uh, times. So this is uh, the contact uh, point and this is the pivot and this is uh, uh, here we have another uh, uh, secondary lever. So totally we get uh, an amplification of uh, 256 uh, times. So another mechanism is uh, cam and uh, gear uh, train. This is the measuring the spindle with the cam and then we have a set of uh, gears. So using this uh, we get uh, the amplification of the signal and this, this is another system with, uh, which uses lever with uh, gear. Using lever system, we get some amplification and using the gear train, we get uh, added uh, amplification, further amplification of the signal. 
Uh, these are other uh, systems uh, to amplify the input signal. This is uh, lever and gear. So this is uh, lever and uh, gear and uh, the twisted uh, strip and this is a lever combined with a band wound around the drum. We have a drum here and a band is wound around this drum. So there also we get amplification of the signal. Now let us study a very common type of mechanical indicator that is a dial indicator. So this dial indicator measures change in length and it does not measure the length itself. However, within this range of operation, it measures the actual length of the work pieces. For example, if the range of the dial indicator is 0 to 10 millimeter, so the range is 0 to 10 millimeter, and if the workpiece size is say 5 millimeter, so the mechanical dial indicator can be used uh, directly to measure uh, the length of the uh, work pieces. So various uh, names are used for uh, dial indicators uh, depending upon the type and purpose including uh, dial gauge, probe indicator, test indicator, dial test indicator, drop indicator, plunger indicator, etc. Now this uh, picture shows uh, the arrangement of the dial indicator. This is the table uh, uh, on which uh, the standard or uh, work pieces uh, are placed. So this, uh, this is the reference uh, 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 point and uh, this is the standard. For example, slip gauge can be used as standard to set the desired uh, uh, distance between uh, the plunger and uh, the uh, reference uh, point. Now, they say we want uh, a desired height of 10 millimeter. This is the basic dimension. Then we use a slip gauge of uh, 10 millimeter dimension. We keep it between the plunger and uh, the table, that is the reference point, and we set uh, the dial indicator to read uh, 0. We adjust the height of uh, the dial indicator so that it reads 0. Now we remove this uh, standard and we place uh, the work piece whose uh, uh, height is to be checked. Uh, that is placed, work piece is placed between plunger and uh, the reference point. If uh, the size of the work piece is greater than the standard size that is 10 millimeter, then this is the error or difference for the basic uh, size. So this difference in size can be uh, measured using uh, this dial indicator arrangement. Now let us study the basic operation of uh, the mechanical uh, indicator, dial indicator. This is the dial uh, indicator and uh, we have a granite table or a cast iron uh, table. This uh, is the reference uh, point and then we have a column on which we have we have an arrangement for mounting uh, the dial indicator. The dial indicator height can be adjusted by uh, moving this uh, bracket or it can be dial indicator itself can be moved up and down and then it can be clamped using this uh, uh, knob. Now this is the uh, height, this height can be adjusted depending upon the work piece uh, height. Now uh, initially we have to adjust uh, the height of the indicator to accommodate uh, the work pieces of different heights and then uh, we have to insert this slip gauge between the spindle and the reference point between the contact probe and uh, the reference point that is surface uh, top surface of the reference uh, table and we should set the indicator to read 0. Now we should remove the slip gauge and insert the workpiece. Standard should be removed and workpiece whose uh, heights uh, are to be inspected, they should they are ins inserted between the table and uh, the plunger. And then if the size is uh, different from the standard size, the pointer will uh, move and that will show the change in the difference. difference. So that is uh, recorded.
Now uh, let us study the construction of uh, the dial indicator. There are uh, many parts in the dial indicator. Uh, this is the indicating hand and then we have a rotary scale with uh, markings and there is a dust uh, cap to, to protect uh, the uh, rack and uh, we have a basil to protect uh, the pointer and the scale, basil clamp and then we have the stem connected to the uh, connected to the body of uh, the dial indicator and then there is a rack or a spindle and then the contact uh, probe is connected uh, mounted on the rack. Now there is a mounting uh, lug using this, this can be mounted to the uh, stand. Now this uh, shows a dial uh, indicator wherein uh, you can see uh, we have a pointer and then we have a revolution uh, counter and this is the scale you can see this is uh, 0 and this is uh, uh, 10 so this uh, 0 to 10 we have uh, 10 uh, markings each small marking represents 0 0.01 millimeter so when the pointer moves from 0 to 10 so the displacement of uh, the plunger uh, will be 0.01 into 10 that is 0.1 millimeter. So like that if uh, the pointer completes one revolution so it will be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1 mm. So if pointer completes one revolution uh, the movement of the plunger will be 1 millimeter. Like that you can see uh, the pointer can rotate uh, 10 times, 10 revolutions so we have uh, 10 uh, markings here 0, 0, 1, 2, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the range of this uh, dial indicator is uh, 0 to 10 uh, millimeter and least uh, count is 0 0.01 uh, millimeter. Now, uh, so let us see the internal uh, construction of uh, the dial indicator. This is a mechanical type uh, dial indicator. You can see the contact plunger, stem and the back cover is uh, open. This is the uh, spindle wherein uh, racks, uh, rack is cut and rack is uh, connected is in contact with uh, the pinion and then we have a set of uh, gear uh, trying and there is a uh, spring to bring back the spindle back to initial position when we remove the workpiece. So this is a digital uh, dial indicator, you can see the display, digital uh, display and then uh, uh, we can uh, set uh, the tolerance uh, limits, upper limit and uh, lower limit. We can also set, uh, we can select the display range for example 0 to 10 millimeter, 0 to 20 millimeter, 0 to 30 millimeter. So the range can be selected. Now the magnified uh, view of the internal uh, structure. You can see the spindle on which rack is cut and uh, the pinion is in contact with the rack and uh, there is a spring to bring back the rack when the workpiece is uh, removed and this is the guide uh, for uh, the rack and this is the spring and there is a gear uh, train for amplification of the signal. Gear uh, train amplification is the most common method used to magnify the tan indicator motion that is uh, the plunger motion because its accuracy meets uh, the requirements of uh, comparison measurement. In use, the sensitive contact probe is part of a rack in which a series of 3 to 5 gears magnifies and transmits the movement of the contact probe to the pinion gear on which uh, the indicator hand is uh, mounted. Now we can see the dial indicator, 
back cover is uh, opened i am uh, pressing the plunger we can see the movement of the plunger we have uh, guide for uh, the movement of the plunger and the guide rod we can also see the rack and uh, pinion we can also see a spring now different types of uh, dials are uh, used this is a, a dial uh, with continuous uh, clockwise uh, markings 0 to 90 markings and this is a continuous counter clockwise uh, markings and this is the balanced type that is the, in the clockwise we have 0 to 50 markings and then in the counter clockwise uh, we have uh, 0 to 50 markings And then we have flat and round uh, contact uh, points. So we have this is uh, the flat contact uh, point, and this is the anvil of the table on which workpiece is uh, mounted. A workpiece with uh, flat surface, a round uh, workpiece. Okay. Now it is very essential that uh, the uh, surface of the flat contact point should be parallel to the anvil uh, surface otherwise uh, the, it will give uh, uh, error and we can see here uh, round uh, contact uh, points now when we use round contact points and when we are checking the round parts it is essential that uh, uh, the contact point uh, contacts uh, the the mag maximum size of the workpiece for example the diameter of the workpiece if we uh, place the cylindrical object like this then we get uh, the error in reading so readability of uh, the dial indicator is another important uh, thing you can see here uh, commercial uh, dial indicator wherein uh, markings are uh, there and they are very much uh, clear so reading uh, is uh, very easy also we can, one can uh, have a digital indicator so wherein uh, you can select the system metric system or english uh, system now the measurement errors in uh, dial indicator i can see here in this picture uh, we have uh, the table on which uh, the work pieces are uh, uh, placed now we have this uh, dial indicator mounted on this arm now when we insert the work piece what happens if this uh, arm is not uh, rigid enough it will bend and then we get a wrong uh, reading so how do we eliminate this uh, deflection of uh, this support we should use a very rigid very strong uh, uh, arm or else we have to minimize the overhang of uh, this dial indicator it should be moved as close to the column as possible also we can minimize the deflection of these supports using uh, extra support as shown here Now what are the uses of uh, dial indicator? So it is uh, used in uh, the turning uh, work to check whether the whether we have uh, achieved the proper uh, size of the workpiece. It can be used to check the wobbling of uh, the rotating uh, surfaces. It can also be used to check uh, the roundness of uh, the work parts you can see the work piece is mounted on b block and then uh, a rotation is uh, given to the work piece so it is rotated and then readings of uh, the dial indicator are taken if this is not round then this will indicate what is the amount of uh, error also it is used to check uh, the wobbling in uh, the rotary saws The amount of uh, magnification of an indicator 
depends on uh, its use and uh, desired uh, resolution. Dial indicators can have uh, gear trains that uh, amplify the movement uh, anywhere from 40 is to 1 to 1500 is to 1. That means a magnification of 1500 times is uh, possible. This can give a dial indicator a discrimination or resolution of 0 0.02 millimeter to 0 0.001 millimeter. The total travel or uh, reading capacity of the dial indicator commonly ranges uh, from uh, 0 0.075 millimeter to 50 millimeter or uh, more. So, in the case of uh, long range indicators, for example, 0 to 100 millimeters, 0 to 105, 150 millimeters, the gear train drives uh, revolution uh, counters. You can see here. Uh, we have this uh, pointer, the main scale, and then the revolution counter uh, we can uh, see here, which uh, tells how many revolution the pointer has uh, rotated. The revolution counters that tell the user the number of times the hand has traveled around the dial and thus the range of indicators uh, displacement can be known. These uh, dial indicators uh, are uh, calibrated using uh, slip gauges or using dial gauge uh, calibrators. So, you can see here uh, a calibrated uh, stand uh, which is used to calibrate the dial indicators. Dial indicator which is to be calibrated is uh, mounted and you can see there is a disc with uh, markings and then uh, uh, we have to note down what is the reading given by this uh, standard calibrator and what is the reading given by the dial indicator and then we can we will come to know what is the amount of uh, error in the dial indicator. So, this is another uh, calibrator which is uh, a digital type. Now, uh, let us study how we can use uh, a dial indicator as uh, a comparator. We can uh, see we have uh, a slip gauge box. These slip gauges are used as a reference to set the basic size in the dial indicator. Now we have the round workpiece and a vernier caliper to measure the diameter of uh, the workpiece the close view of uh, the workpiece. Now we can observe uh, the dial indicator fixed to the stand. Now we can we are observing uh, the replaceable uh, table. These uh, replaceable tables can be changed depending upon uh, the uh, workpiece. And you can see the slot in the stand to accommodate the uh, table. The dial indicator is uh, fixed in the bracket. The least count of the dial indicator is uh, 0 0.01 millimeter and range is 0 to 10 millimeter. Now we can uh, adjust the height of the dial indicator to accommodate uh, for pieces of different uh, heights. By rotating the, this uh, nut, we can adjust uh, the height of the bracket. We can raise it or lower it in the column. Now, uh, I am measuring uh, the diameter of the workpiece using uh, vernier caliper. The diameter of the workpiece is 19 uh, millimeter. Now I have to select uh, 19 millimeter slip gauge. I am uh, selecting uh, two slip gauges, one uh, 9 millimeter thick and the other one uh, 10 millimeter thick. After cleaning the surfaces of uh, slip gauges, we have to ring them properly to build a pile of the desired thickness. Now uh, we can see a slip gauge pile of 19 uh, millimeter thickness.
after uh, ringing we can use this file to set the basic size in the dial indicator we have to insert the slipcage file between the table surface and uh, the dial indicator so this is the desired size 19 millimeter is the desired uh, size so we have to set the dial indicator to a read zero by rotating the bezel now the dial indicator is reading uh, zero that means when the gap between the spindle and the table surface is uh, equal to 19 millimeter indicator shows zero millimeter now we have to remove the slip cage file Now the reading is uh, 0. We have to remove the slip cache file and then we have to insert uh, the workpiece which is to be inspected. So I am inserting the cylinder which is to be inspected and we have to rotate it slowly so that we get the maximum uh, reading. So and we have to slowly rotate or uh, roll the workpiece. Now you can see the pointer is moving. So we have to note down the maximum uh, reading. So the maximum reading is uh, three divisions. That means the least count is uh, 0 0.01 millimeter. So it is giving five uh, divisions. So the workpiece size, the workpiece diameter is greater than the desired size by 5 divisions that means 0 0.05 millimeter that means the size of the cylinder is 19.0 uh, uh, millimeter now we have uh, another type of uh, dial indicator known as dial uh, test indicator we can see the photographic view of uh, dial test indicator we have a lever which uh, moves uh, in this fashion so when the lever moves in this fashion the pointer will move and it will indicate the movement of uh, this uh, stylus so whenever uh, we want to measure the displacement for example we have a, a work piece uh, like this placed on uh, the surface uh, plate now depending upon the height of uh, the work piece stylus will move up and down so the movement of uh, this uh, stylus is uh, amplified by using uh, this uh, lever so we have a pivot ball uh, bearing we have a pivot here and then we have a lever at the end of uh, the lever we have a gear uh, sector and which is uh, in engagement with this is the gear uh, sector this is in engagement with uh, a pinion so pinion will also rotate so the rotation of the pinion will uh, be transferred to the pointer to the pointer by means of uh, bevel uh, gear arrangement and uh, the pointer will uh, move on the scale and we can not on the reading so we can amplify the displacement of uh, the stylus by means of uh, this uh, uh, lever uh, arrangement now we will move to another uh, type of uh, mechanical comparator known as a read type mechanical comparator this uh, 
sketch uh, shows the arrangement of uh, grid type uh, mechanical comparator. We have uh, uh, member two members. So member A, this is the movable uh, member which will uh, move uh, up and down and there is a fixed uh, member. These two are connected by means of horizontal reeds. We have a horizontal reed here and we have another uh, horizontal reed here. So these two are uh, the horizontal reeds named uh, R1. Now uh, we have uh, a set of vertical reeds uh, R2. So one vertical reed is connected to the movable member and another vertical reed is fixed to the fixed member. Now when the component is inserted between the surface plate and uh, the plunger, the plunger will move. So this x is the input uh, displacement depending upon the height of the component, plunger will move up and down and then uh, a movable member A will also move up and down. The two vertical reeds, they are joined at the top and then uh, a pointer is uh, fixed at this uh, point. So since the two vertical reeds are joined, when the plunger moves up and down, the reed will uh, tilt in this uh, fashion and hence the pointer will also move. And then we can uh, note down uh, the reading, displacement uh, reading. A linear uh, motion of uh, the spindle moves the free block uh, vertically, causing uh, the vertical reed on the floating block to slide past uh, the vertical reed on the fixed block. Now, uh, as these vertical reeds are joined at the upper uh, end, the two reeds are joined at the upper end. Instead of slipping, the movement causes both reeds swing through an arc and uh, the pointer swings through a much uh, wider uh, distance. The amount of pointer swing is proportional to the display distance the floating block has moved but uh, of course very much uh, magnified. Now this uh, shows the amplified view of uh, the uh, fixed block and then uh, the vertical reeds. This is the spindle which is fixed to the movable member and two vertical reeds are joined together. At the end of uh, at the top end we have uh, the pointer. So now A is the displacement. Depending upon uh, the height of uh, the workpiece, the, the A can be positive or uh, negative. And then when the height of the workpiece is greater than the standard uh, or the desired height, this uh, spindle will move in this direction and uh, the pointer will uh, swing uh, in this uh, direction. If the height is smaller than the desired uh, height, then the swing will be in this direction and pointer will swing like this and then we can note down uh, the reading. There, uh, these comparators are available in magnifications uh, ranging from 500 to 1000. Comparators of this type have uh, sensitivities of the order of 0.002 millimeter per uh, scale uh, division. Now again we have a read type uh, uh, comparator wherein the mechanical pointer is replaced with uh, an optical uh, lever. So this is uh, the top end of the reader, uh, uh, reads, vertical reads and we have uh, a lamp and a lens so we get uh, a light beam here. So light beam will go, will move in this direction, we have a mirror, so light is reflected back. So when the top end of the reed moves uh, 
uh, swings uh, in this fashion, the uh, reflected light will also move on the scale and hence we can uh, uh, note down the displacement of the spindle. So, in this case uh, magnification is obtained by the length of this uh, uh, vertical uh, read as also uh, the magnification is uh, further magnification is obtained by this optical uh, arrangement. Now we are uh, coming to the end of uh, the lecture 1 in uh, module uh, 10. In this lecture, we learnt about the uh, basics of uh, dial indicators, uh, what are the basic uh, features or characteristics of uh, uh, the mechanical comparators, what, is the, what are the purposes of uh, comparators, uh, what are the uses of comparators, what are the various uh, types of uh, comparators and then we also learnt about uh, the construction and uh, working of uh, mechanical type uh, dial indicator. Uh, now we will uh, stop here and we will continue the discussion on other uh, types of comparators in the next uh, lecture. Thank you. Yeah.